What's going on, YouTube? Uh, this is Mark, Waste Deep Weight Fishing, Southwest Florida. Hope all is well. Um, you know, the weekend is coming. I'm pretty sure all you guys are going to get out there and get up on those fish. At least I would think so if you're watching this channel. Uh, thank you guys for liking, subscribing, and sharing. Again, thank you to all the sponsors out there that are helping me. Um, you know, build my career, build the YouTube channel. Um, hats off to all you guys, and mostly hats off to you, my subscribers, that are making this possible. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Got a couple of comments, and this made me came up with uh, today's video. Um, some people wanted answers to some questions, so I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there. Basically, what we're going to discuss today is, you know, what are the signs of, of a grass flat uh, being no good? You know, what are the signs, for, you know, for you to go out there and, you know, say, man, I'm, I'm wasting my time here. Um, it's... Just doesn't look like it's going to produce any fish. Well, I'm going to go through a couple of the, the things or signs um, that will indicate whether there's fish or there isn't. So let's jump into it. Straight to the point. Number one, if you go out to a grass flat, you know, the grass flat you've researched, um, it could be a grass flat you've even been to before. And you don't see activity period now i'm not saying as soon as you get there all, all of a sudden you don't see a, not one bird uh, you, you know not a pelican not a comoran nothing you don't see any type of activity okay you know give it a little while before you make that decision to move forward one of the signs one of them is that you do not see any bird activity could be herons near the um, uh, near the mangroves. It could be comorants diving around on the grass flat, hunting bait fish. Could be pelicans diving. If you don't see any of that, it's that's definitely a sign that there's no activity there. And again, if there's nothing for the predators to eat, well, why are the predators going to be there? So that's number one. Number two can be quite the opposite. You can see bait everywhere. <laughs> this is where it gets confusing. You can see bait everywhere. You could be walking up and down that grass flat and see greenbacks and scaled sardines and, and white bait, um, blue crab, and you can see birds diving. You can see all those things. And you can go and fish it. And you can throw everything you have in your box or in your bag and not get one strike. So it, in, it, basically what I'm trying to tell you is, you know, it, you know, there has to be a balance. If there's too much bait, Okay, and too much activity, um, that flat could, you know, could, would, would be definitely holding fish, but they're full. Um, they're not hungry. If there's that much bait on the flat and you can't get a bite or you can't get a blow up on a top water or a hit on a spoon or a plug or a jig, that flat may be just flooded with bait and the fish may come in and feed, feed, feed and gorge and gorge and gorge and gorge and gorge and they're going to get locked, y'all. Sometimes it happens. It's unbelievable, but it happens. That's sign number two. Number three. Depending on what you're dealing with, uh, as far as or what type of species you're you're looking to target, um, water clarity. If you see that you have a really really dirty water, silted up, 
lots of algae and, and, and vegetation. Um, nine out of ten times. And I understand, you know, redfish in Louisiana, they love the mud. But we're not in Louisiana. We're talking about Florida right now. Um, we're talking about our Florida summer pattern. Nine out of ten times, if you find cleaner water with less silt, less mud, um, with a lot less, you know, matted algae, you'll find fish. If you see a lot of this on the flat that you're kayaking on or pulling through or wading, um, and you've been there for an hour or two and you've hit all the areas you think fish are going to be and you're still not getting strikes, definitely maybe time to uh, move down the flat um, or you know, down the flat to cleaner water. Uh, I would definitely suggest, suggest looking for the cleaner water. Um, that would be your third sign or third indicator that you know fish may not be in that particular zone for that day. Number four, let's just say you have clear water, you have bait, birds diving, everything looks great, and you're out there waiting, or you're you know, in a kayak or a boat, and you happen to see flipper. Oh, now it doesn't necessarily mean that all the fish are gonna be gone. But I'm a betting man. I would say 98% of the time, if you see flipper, and when I say flipper, I mean a dolphin. If you are wait, wait, you know, if you're waiting or you're in a kayak and you're in a, a good zone, okay, and um, you see a couple of dolphins chasing bait, you know, smacking a fish, you know, into the air. Um, acting very erratic or, or, or actively hunting, you know, within a 30 yard radius around you and you're standing there or you're in the kayak, chances are Flipper scared off every single snook and redfish and trout in that area. Dolphins are extremely smart. They're a superior predator. The fish know this. If Flipper shows up, it's time to move on. Because you're just wasting your time throwing out there. And you may, you, know, you may stick a fish or two, and then you have to deal with Flipper stealing that fish off your line. And he's going to constantly harass you. And that, that dolphin is going to stay around you um, until, you, until there's no fish. You know, he's going to try to steal every fish from you. So if you come across Flipper while you're out there, that may be another indicator that you might want to move down the line. Um, if you're waiting, unfortunately, and he's there, uh, you, know, you may have to go for a long walk. It's just how it is. And last but not least, very, very, very important. And I never realized how important it is um, up until like the last two or three years of wade fishing and how much of a role it really does play. Wind. If you are on a boat or a kayak, you do have the ability um, to move on, move to different areas. But when you're wading, you are limited. So wind plays a very big factor into the game. Um, there's certain times of the year where you could stand and you could fish a wind-blown point and fish will stack up there like corkwood and I'm telling you, you can throw just about anything on that point and it's gonna get eight. And there's times when the wind is not in your favor um, and it, it blows the, the food the uh, you know the things that the predators want away from that flat, and I've seen it a hundred times. You know, and you have to you have to learn to read your wind tables, and when you're picking which spots you're going to fish, um, wind plays a major factor on whether you're going to catch fish or you're not, or you're not going to catch fish. So as of, you know, the, the fifth thing that can 
you know, take you away from that zone you're fishing would be wind. Um, you know, you, you always want, you know, you, ideally you want wind at your back um, at all times, but it depends on which way you're fishing. You know, if, if you're fishing, you know, from the, the let's say the shoreline uh, on a grass flat, you know, fishing outwards, well then you want, the, you know, you want the, the wind behind you so you can get a better cast. Um, but let's say the, the water's in and you're not fishing on the grass flat, but you're fishing against the bushes, and now you're turned around. Well, now you've got the, fit, the, the the wind at your face. Sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. So wind will play a factor for sure um, on determining on whether that flat is going to be holding um, bait fish. And in return, if it's holding the bait fish, well then technically, as the book says, if it's got bait fish, it's going to have predators that are going to eat those bait fish and will eat those shrimp and eat those crab. So wind, it's debatable, but wind is, is, is definitely another one that's, that's on that list. And finally, you know, the last one, you know, there, there's, there's about 10 or 15 different elements that could be thrown out there, but I'm going to give you some of the majors. Um, the last one that can uh, be a deterrent for predator fish on a grass flat is no ambush points. If you get to a grass flat and you don't see potholes or you see just nothing but mud, or if you if you go out to a, a grass flat and you know two years ago it was full of grass and now it looks like the, the landscape of Mars. Um, that is going to be a deterrent, okay? If there's no grass and there's no potholes and there's no points and there aren't, um, you know, oysters or, or um, pockets or holes or guts, um, you know, in the break in a sandbar that's usually near a grass flat, if you don't have any of those ambush points or places for the fish to, to, to hide, so they can, you know, pounce upon their prey. Well, that could be another reason or another deterrent for bait, you know, to, to, to not be there. Um, and if the fish doesn't have anywhere, you know, anywhere to ambush or a way to, to hunt down its prey, well, it's gonna find those areas because that's what their their biology tells them to do okay it's the science of the fish you know and, and what's in their dna and how they hunt so if you don't see ambush points if you don't see the potholes and you don't see the places where fish should be hunting you know the mouths uh, uh, you know of of the creeks um uh you, you know potholes um cuts in the oyster bar, um, a, a good gut along an oyster bar, um, let's see, uh, you know, drop-offs, um, sea life, I mean, if you don't see any of those things on a particular flat, then I would say it's time to find a different flat to fish for for that day. And I'll give you an example, a quick one. Of, of what I mean by that. Um, there's a grass flat out near Sanibel that I fish all the time. Um, and we had a major, major storm come through. Well, that same flat, you know, not three weeks before, I was, you know, popping five to 10 redfish every time I went out there with soft plastics and, and spoons. After that storm, it blew in all this sand and all the grass and the potholes just got completely covered in sand. And for two months, just about two months, that whole flat was completely dead. It looked like the surface of, of Mars. You know, it, it was just void of anything. There wasn't a bird, there wasn't a mullet, there wasn't um, a greenback, there wasn't a needlefish, there wasn't a puffer, there wasn't a dolphin, 
there wasn't even a crab for two months, all because all the grass got completely covered in sand um, from the storm, from the, the, the big storm that we had, and it had to take time for that sand to get blown off that grass again. And once once that grass came, you know, once the the sand blew out and you know the water was cleaned up and the grass was flowing and you could see the potholes again, sure, you know, sure enough, the fish came back. So I hope this helps you out there. Um, you know, when you're out locating new spots or even you know fishing your usual spot and then you know all of a sudden now there's no fish there well keep some of these pointers in mind when you're out there i'm sure it's going to help you and uh you know instead of wasting your time and you know you go there and you say wow oh, man it was fish here you know for two months why there's there nothing now just keep an eye on your surroundings okay do your homework before you, you know plan your fishing trip before you get out there and fish check your weather check your tides check your wind um, and uh, make sure you know you see the things that you need to see when you get up on that flat. And if you don't, well, you know, give it a quick shot. You never know. You know, like I said, I'm not you know God's gift to the inshore fishermen. I'm just going by my experiences and the trends that I have seen in the last 20 years of walking the grass flats of Southwest Florida. All right, guys, I'm gonna let it go with that. And uh, I will see you on the water here very shortly. Again, if you're interested in booking a trip with me on Waist Deep Weight Fishing Southwest Florida, um, all you can do is go into my description. You'll see all the links there to get in touch with me. Um, if you like any of the equipment I use in my videos, of course, the links are in the description. Just click on them, and it'll bring you to their website. Till then, love you all. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing, being a part of the Waist Deep family. And I will see you guys out on the water.